right, my name is Wes Widener. I'm data janitor at Heavy Sleeper. Uh, my daughter asked why I put that in there. It's because I work on the cloud team with CrowdStrike, and every now and then we're on uh, pager duty rotation, and right now I'm on permanent pager, du pager duty rotation. So that kind of feeds into what I'm going to talk about here in this weird way that I don't want to actually have to be paged. So I want to build systems that don't get broken. So a little bit of context first. When it comes to containerization, security, and all of this, why am I here? Why is the name of the talk containing the cloud? Well, this just happened uh, this past week. And so since it's public, I get to throw it out there. We recently were FedRAMP um, ready, not authorized, FedRAMP ready. Um, there is a, how many of you are familiar with FedRAMP or any of that stuff? So Amazon has a special cloud that they built out for the government that is called GovCloud. And we call you know, everything, that's an overloaded term. Uh, in order to get into it, you have to pass all kinds of audits, checks, uh, pen tests, everything. This was our last pen test that just completed um, two, three weeks ago. So now we are ready to sell to government organizations or organizations in general that want to get into that platform. And I've been on the team that's been working on this for about a year. So that's sort of the context here. What that means is that we're using Kubernetes in FedRAMP or for our GovCloud installation, and we are FedRAMP authorized. A big question going into it was how would we get to do that when we're one of the first, not the first, but one of the first companies to use containerization in a highly secured environment. Um, so we're also using it for our security application. So we're helping secure other people. And we're doing it for highly secure, um, or for security conscious organizations. They're very opinionated on how they want things to be run. So that kind of ups the stakes. And I also didn't put into here that uh, Google um, is one of our investors, so we also have pressure from that side too. So all around, lots of scrutiny. That's the context for when, where I'm coming from on container securitization. So being on this team for about a year, last year I did um, like a month or so just reading through white papers of what people have written about containerization and security and stuff like that. And part of the, uh, the cool thing about this conference, the uh, standing on the shoulders of giants, Containerization is nothing but shoulders of giants over the years. Nothing new about containerization. What's new about it is how it glues together. Um, some other points here, and these are part of the slides that I was just putting together like literally five minutes ago. Um, polling shows the primary reason for people not going into or not using containers is security. They worry about how that, how that works. Now that's become less and less over the last couple of years. But it's still something that you probably have running around in your mind. In fact, there's a lot of organizations that just flat out know. So I'm coming at it from this high, secure, conscious, all this to let you know that it is possible to come to, to implement containerization securely and properly. Um, I also want to point out that I'm coming at this question from a security or from a systems engineering perspective. I'm a software engineer. I happen to work for a security company. Um, so. Whenever I'm at a conference like this, I meet a lot of you guys that work in SOX, and that's great, that's cool. I'm the guy that runs the stuff behind the scenes that helps support you. So we, um, we just crossed the billion, 100 billion event mark per day, to put that in context. Um, our, uh, uh, I think CIO or so was, was saying that that was about on par with like Facebook and, and a few other large companies. So we're, we're ingesting an awful lot of data. That doesn't leave a lot of room for error. That means we need to be secure, but we also need to just get the job done. So what are containers, first of all? How many of you are using containers today? Anybody? Okay. Docker containers. Anybody using something other than Docker containers in any application? Nobody? So containerization is actually an overloaded term. It can mean like a whole bunch of things iOS, Android, OS 10, Windows, they all have the concept of containers that are baked in. That's where the entire industry has been moving for quite a while now. Um, containers, I would argue, are all about application deployment. Now, in order to put that into context, I put that slide in the wrong place. Um, in order to put that into context, so let's give a brief history of software development lifecycle, SDLC. 
The simplest deployment is a self-contained binary. Okay? You know what I mean when I say that? Just a, an executable, everything linked in, we throw it over the wall. The problem with that is we, we kind of like dependencies. Software engineers, we're a lazy bunch. We like to use what other people have already put together. So we end up using libraries. That introduces, um, that introduces another layer of complexity. Now I have to know what library I'm depending on. I have to know what version of that library it is. And I have to bundle that library up in order to ship it with my application. Consistent deployments, that, this is where this really comes in. Consistent deployments mean that I have to find that same, uh, like bitwise same deployment every time. Okay, I'm moving into, a, uh, aiming at a certain thing here. Um, system peculi peculiarities cause deployments to be complex. Now, there's been several security related incidents in software deployment recently. Uh, NPM repo recently, someone yanked their package and it broke like a whole buttload of other packages. More recently though, uh, Python had one of their repos compromised. Somebody was publishing like nefarious packages that kind of sounded like something else. That's another issue. So software deployment is complex. Uh, one author said that software development is one of the most complex things that a person can do today. I think that they weren't entirely exaggerating on that. So this is the appropriate place for the XKCD comic. So the XKCD comic here, in a nutshell, is everything is a microservice if you uh, throw out most of the features. And that's basically where containerization has been for the last year or two. And this is not entirely, I would argue this isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, if you want to go play with something like um, Elasticsearch or Cassandra or Kafka or something like that, horribly complex software by itself, I don't really care to go track down all the configuration. If somebody wraps it up in a nice container, then I can just <laughs> Docker run and get it running right there. That's cool. But that's not going to carry us over into production. That's where the, uh, the, the critique here is. So, our deployment options. First we started off with single binaries, then we did package management systems, and we still use those, they still get a lot of use, still have their niche. Uh, then we moved to virtual machines. And virtual machines are great, that's where Amazon built what we now know as the cloud. We're not just Amazon, but many other companies. Uh, the problem though is that VMs are heavy and slow. That is, you have to literally boot an entire system, go through the entire boot up sequence. By contrast, containers are deployments of virtual, virtual machines. They boot up in milliseconds, not seconds. Um, and they give us, so this is what they give software engineers. They give us the familiarity of running in a VM that's all of our own, and they, with the speed of process execution. So as a software engineer, I like to, to occupy the entire system. Just ask my kids. When we watch a movie, I like to, to explore the whole space. I like to do that when I'm, soft, when I'm engineering software, too. That is, this network interface is mine. All mine. Nothing else's. And, and that's a good um, pattern to, to go to because that's where a lot of software started breaking and is where we have mixing of, de of uh, dependencies. So since we're at an InfoSec conference, now that we've gotten the uh, deployment part out of the way, here's the attack surface. On a bare metal machine, you've got all your apps running on the host <coughs> OS, and the hardware is accessible right there. That would be the least secure. VMs, on the other side, have apps running on their own OS abstraction on, side, on, on top of a hypervisor, that actually provides the abstraction to the hardware. Now, containers don't have the hypervisor. Containers are running in the host OS on the hardware. And you're probably wondering, well, aren't we supposed to get more security with containerization? No, not at all. I, and I want to point this out. The most secure is running in a VM. Actually, the most secure is running in your own machine, in its own space. But because of something, because we need to pack our applications as tightly as possible to get the most out of all of our rack space, all of our compute power, we need to figure out a happy medium. That's what containers are. The containers, so put it in another perspective, there are 12 VM escapes I searched back 
all the way to 2007. There are 12 VM escapes. These are hypervisor attacks, okay? So, okay, 12 VM escapes. And I want to point out something here to you. Most of these are escapes that are off of like random crap, like virtual hoppy, or virtual floppy disk controller, or um, just thing like a Fusion SVGA driver. You should be running that anyway. You don't need that on your VMs. So it actually shrinks if you're doing your VM uh, deployment properly. By contrast, the primary attack surface for containers is the kernel itself, okay? Uh, almost 2,000 kernel exploits back to 2010, okay? And that's because the, the kernel is a really complex, just, it's really complex, okay? That's what we're up against. We removed the hypervisor layer. That means we went from 12 VM escapes. Now we have almost 2,000, okay? That's because we don't have this intermediate layer. So that means, uh, so a container is really just a logical separation of a set of processes, files, and other resources that the, the kernel just says, we're going to set this aside, okay? We're going to treat an application like a logical unit. So what we've, what we've got here is um, a vulnerability for all of our outdated dependencies and attack vectors. Um, we need to track and scan both the base image as well as all of the application libraries that that base image has in it, okay? Now, that means that security begins at container creation. One of the first things that we did when we set up our entire um, uh, moving into a containerized space was we have a system for putting together the Docker files for our developers because fundamentally I don't trust software engineers. I'm one of them. I don't trust me. But, so uh, we start off with uh, the way the container is built up. Each layer, um, our images are built up by layers. That's the copy on write file system. And each layer has an operation that's performed on the layer below it. So it starts with the from of a base image, and that's where all security begins, is making sure that you're using a secure base image. Um, and then each command, um, stays with that build. So one thing that we do is uh, we don't put secrets into our build scripts. We have to trust this, the build machine. We have to also figure out how to tag our images so that we know that they came from the build machine. Uh, Docker in particular has a nice cryptographic um, hash that goes with the, cont the contents of every image. We also um, use labels for auditing purposes. When somebody says, well, who pushed this image? Uh, then we can go back and say, here's where they push this image on this system at this time and all this other stuff. And then we use what's called the builder pattern when it comes to container creation. The builder pattern means that we use one image that has all of the helper libraries, all the dev versions of libraries, to build the binary. And then we have a different image that we deploy that has all the statically linked stuff in it. So we have a fat image in intermediary that has all the, the stuff that we need, all of our cool developer tools, and then we strip all that stuff out when we go to put it in production. This gives us a unique opportunity. Security is actually usually bolted on after the fact in software development. Containers give us the ability to put security as part of the workflow in building an application. At CrowdStrike, we have the uh, philosophy that uh, security shouldn't get in the way of what you're doing it should fit alongside it. So this gives, especially application security engineers, an opportunity to come along and audit your Docker scripts, your base images, your libraries, and then, then provide a um, helpful way to like steer that into a better um, way. Uh, so the continuous deployment, um, this quote I love, uh, when healthcare gov crashed, the, um, they went out and they asked industry experts, and one of them came back and said, the first suggestion that he would have was for President Obama to have the team deploy to production every day. And that, has, that was a software industry thing. In the software industry or the software engineering, that's a really good, like, de like make your software less complex, makes it, make it easier to set up. But as a security of operation, it has another implication, too, in that the less snowflakey your stuff is, the, the easier it will be to just tear it down, put something else in its place. So continuous security is what I'm arguing that we're going to move to here. 
Uh, the way to move forward is with DevOps tooling. There's all kinds of great stuff, and like I said in the beginning, hour to 30 minutes, so I'm kind of rushing through this. Um, standardized security tooling can fit in each part of the um, software development life cycle when it comes to container security. Um, I, I do want to point out one thing though that um, containerization is not, so containerization is not less complex, it's even more. We get every bit of complexity from, from the lower levels on up. So it ends up being this wave of complexity. So think of every piece of this deployment process as an opportunity for you to inject good security practices. Uh, yeah, there it is. All the software supply chain issues are applied to containers. Um, the one thing though that you can look at whenever your managers ask you, why are we putting in all of this added complexity? At the end of the day, it will sign off when it comes to velocity and deployments. We have this really great system set up. It uses Spinnaker, which is Netflix's um, development tool for, or deployment tool for containers and all that. And it is really complex. You, you should never use that for a side project. But as, as an engineering, as an industry thing, it's really awesome because it's got all these hooks and checks and stuff built in. And in particular, security checks. So here's what I mean by all the complexities of the software build lifecycle. You've got the developer who builds things and commits it to GitHub um, or to Git a repository somewhere. Somebody could take control of the repository. The image is built by something, usually a developer on their laptop, and they push it up to a registry, which they shouldn't do. And then that registry is what deploys that into running containers in an environment. Every, every layer of that can, can and should have um, eyes on it from a security perspective. So we can automate, the good news is we can automate a lot of the security tooling. Um, another tie-in to the theme of this uh, today of standing on the shoulders of giants, Red Hat has done amazing things with container security. Uh, not particularly Docker necessarily, but they put a lot of thought into it. You wouldn't believe how many white papers and lectures that they have out there. Root in a container no longer maps to root on a host. Um, just want to throw that out there, but it's still problematic. File ownership gets mangled between the host and the guest. Uh, read or uh, Use read only if you have to. Uh, the tight coupling between host and a guest is a microservice fail. Treat that as a code smell or a security smell. Shouldn't do that. If at all possible, get those off. Uh, containers need to provide a minimal Containers provide minimal protection to the host operating system. They actually don't at all. So just treat your containers, your guest uh, containers as hostile, and that'll give you a good uh, path forward. Um, real quick, I'm running out of time here. That's why I'm trying to talk a little bit faster. Um, it's up to us to use additional protection measures. It's really easy to shoot yourself in the foot with containers. You could just pull something straight off of GitHub or uh, Docker Hub and just start using that. And it's very easy to, to let yourself be lazy and put that straight into production. Don't do that. Uh, use AppArmor, SE Linux, to further harden your images. These are security profiles that you can, you can add to the, the container running engine, usually Docker, and further secure your, your containers as they run. Or, what was released this week, uh, Google's Gvisor system, which I encourage you to take a look at, it's actually a shim that sits between your application and the kernel itself, and provides additional security. Trace your application's kernel calls to discover what capabilities it really needs, and then shrink wrap those capabilities so that your app doesn't have the ability to do things like access a floppy disk, which it never needs the, uh, the uh, possibility of doing. So to wrap up real quick, don't run your application as root, don't write to disk in production, um, audit your deployments, and configuration as code, I can't stress this enough, the pattern for containers is to apply environment variables to the container as it runs in runtime, okay? There's all kinds of patterns to get away, either, either to get away from that or to make that better. There's a sidecar system that LinkedIn uses called Envoy, which is really, really good. I encourage you to use that pattern. Or, if nothing else, track and version all the configuration stuff around your application because I promise you, you will get paged at night and somebody changed some random variable somewhere and you have to go track it down. Remember the first slide? I'm a heavy sleeper. I don't want to do that. All right. Because I had to run through the slides real quick, 
I'm sorry. But the good news is I've captured a lot of this, an awful lot of this, in my container security awesome. And I encourage you to go and look at it and especially star it. I treat stars as love, so show me a lot of love. Thank you guys.